Hello and welcome back to Curb Stomp City and another episode of ECW Lives on TW 2016. Today we're bringing you another episode of ECW Revolt. But firstly, I need to point out that we're missing quite a few people. Um, they seem to be on a CMLL pay-per-view. Also, Rhino signed his written deal and we've also brought in Liz Mark Jr. on a paper appearance deal. So yeah, there's, that's another signing for us. But we are missing him tonight. We're missing Vampiro, Juventud Guerrero, CM Punk and AJ Styles. Um, so I've had to sort of build a card around that. So to see it as more of a transitional card rather than developing any storylines, especially the main storyline with the blackout. So yeah, I've just had to do what I can with that. And yeah, I'm going to run it straight away. And we open with a video airing the great Muta. And he's going to debut tonight. It's, for now, it's a one-off appearance on loan. But he's going to be in tonight's main event. Um, and that got a 65C. And in about that had subpar wrestling, non-existent crowd, he, the, the blackout defeated Rojo and Kaz Hayashi in eight minutes when Aries defeated Rojo by pinfall with a brain buster. Kaz Hayashi was head and shoulders above everyone else. And Felon and Angel are a good pairing. Um, Felon got a 44. Aries got a 34. Uh, Kaz Hayashi got a 53. And Rojo got a 43. I'm starting to have some second thoughts about Aries at the minute because obviously what happened backstage with Vampiro, and they obviously hate each other now, and that's bringing a bit of tension backstage. Um, and he's not doing exceptionally well in the ring. So... His place on the card and on the roster is being considered right now. Um, Felon is improving in performance skills. And Kaz Hayashi was kept strong. And Rojo was just there to take the loss, really. And that got a 45D. And then a video shows John Cena rapping alongside Jay Briscoe. And just to keep them relevant. And this got a D-39. They won't be in a match tonight, but they've had a segment. And then a video airs showing Samoa Joe training in MMA locking in submissions into various fighters in a training gym and tapping them out. And this got a D minus 40. So we're going to start pushing that Samoa Joe character, the submission machine, um, going forward. And then in a good match, there's C minus 53. Samoa Joe defeats Tajiri in 10 minutes by submission with a dragon sleeper. So that would be one of the submissions that was seen in the video. And Samoa Joe got a 56, Tajiri got a 42. So yeah, this is set to Wild Brawl. And Samoa Joe comes out looking strong and pushing his submission move. So C minus 53. And in the main event, in a decent match, the great Muta defeated Minuri Tanaka in 18 minutes by pinfall. And he debuted his maniac gimmick and he got an average. Muto got a 66 and Tanaka got a 62. So he's almost on par with the great Muta, who's one of the best in the game. And this got a regular and, yeah, ended in pinfall, decisive, and great Muta to be the victor. So, yeah, it's a good start to great Muta being on ECW. We're probably going to bring him back at one point. But, yeah, I won't say anything more on that, just for now anyway. Um, and we've got a 60C, which is not, ba not bad at all. Um, this show increased our popularity in 19 regions. And CM Punk has officially left CMLL. He was there on loan. Um, even though he's been kayfabe kidnapped on our TV show. Um, but yeah, he's lost in the pre-show of their pay-per-view. That was the other night or last night. Great Moot has gone on left on loan and we got a 0.52 in the tv rating which is much less than it was last week but we are missing quite a few people i tried to bring in the great muta just to sort of equal that out but obviously it's not drawn a lot on telly we're bringing in violencia he was on our mexico show and he did well if you remember um, I, I said at the time, I think he's quite old, but he's not. He's only 31, and he looks pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to bring him in, see how he does. He's on $400 a, a per appearance, so he's not earning a lot of money, so he's not going to cost us too much. And, yeah, that just fills in that gap that Muta's just left. 
in terms of numbers. So yeah, we're back to 26. I sorted out a lot of the morale issues using bonuses. I'm going to see if I can give Joey Styles a bonus to cheer him up. So yeah, he's back to normal. Um, Spike Dudley irritated at being left off Revolt. I'm going to give him a bonus as well. And he's happy now. Aries has some big morale issues, so I think I'm going to leave that. Because it's going to cost a lot of money to please him again. I'll try giving him 1,000 just to see how that does. So yeah, he's still annoyed. I don't really want to give him thousands. I'm a bit annoyed with Paul Heyman. He's still, well, he's been annoyed quite a while since January. Um, and that hasn't seemed to have gone. And it's also come back after the Mexico night too. Apparently there seems to be some toxic atmosphere. Probably due to Kevin Nash, maybe. Um, one of the culprits. But he will be leaving soon. He'll be leaving in 18 days time. I can't actually fire him because he's one of the owner goals. But yeah, his contract is expiring very soon. We're just going to have a quick look on this list. I've sorted by under 21s and that are available to work in the USA. Just to see if there's any faces that I sort of recognise that I wouldn't, wouldn't mind bringing in. So, Kenta is a definite option. Um, he's been on loan a couple of times. So I think we're going to... Offer him a contract. I think we can really push him quite well. Kenny Omega, obviously in New Japan in real life. We're going to offer him a, a contract as well. Uh, he's a freelancer. We're not going to bother with him then. I, I don't want to deal with freelancers if they leave too soon. Um, hopefully that can change in the future. Hopefully people can, can stop being freelancers after a while. Like dynamically, but we'll see. Drew Galloway. Um... We'll give him a contract, why not? And Brian Danielson, if we can see if we can re-sign him, but he doesn't actually want to, which is fine. We could just check the hidden gems screen as well. Um, not really anyone that stands out to me there. So we're going to leave that. In terms of size and importance, we dropped back down to 47 in New England, and that was because of the roster size. So I'm going to have to keep running there again. Um, and hopefully, over time, that does get much better because we are on the brink once again. We really don't need. We really can't afford to drop down to regional this late on into the series. We're six months in, so we don't want that to happen. We'll just also look at the chemistry stream before we end the episode. And the AJ Styles has awful chemistry when fighting Rhino. AJ Styles has great chemistry when fighting CM Punk. Felon has pretty good chemistry when being managed by Angel Williams, which is good, since they're in the same stable. Um, John Cena has awful chemistry when fighting Rojo. John Cena has poor chemistry when fighting Kaz Hayashi. Hoover 2 Guerrero has poor chemistry when fighting Samoa Joe. Kevin Nash has awful chemistry when fighting Hoover 2 Guerrero. And Vampiro has good chemistry when fighting Guerrero. We'll probably run that Mexico event this month. We're going to call this one Heatwave, make it one word, and we'll give it a little picture. I'm still undecided what to call this July one, so we're going to just leave it blank for now. And we're just going to put a space back in here because we couldn't do that before. But yeah, I'm going to leave this episode here. I hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit that like button and subscribe for more TEW 2016 and general wrestling content. And until next time, peace.